Well, hello and welcome to Dorm Life 101, a show about all things campus life. Join me, Chris Langlois, as we explore tips and tricks to make your experience on a Hofstra's campus the best it can be. We'll be covering everything from improvements in our dining halls to an inside look at the crazy life of our Hofstra RAs. So grab your IDs and swipe in. This is Dorm Life 101. Here at Hofstra, the Office of Residential Programs strives to meet the needs of our students. We caught up with the residential programs to talk about the improvements that they're bringing to our living spaces. Take a look. Probably the biggest thing we're doing is just updating. Working with student affairs and getting input from students, we try to do, when we do a renovation, we do the infrastructure and we try to do the amenities at the same time. While we did the towers over the last three years, the towers needed new HVAC units, they needed new windows, uh, some upgrade in, in power, uh, security enhancements, the portals coming into the building needed to be upgraded. But while we did those, we worked with students and student affairs on the lounges, uh, both upstairs and the entranceway. Uh, we had vendors come in and look at different bedroom products. So we kind of did both, infrastructure and uh, amenities. This summer in Nassau, Suffolk, we're going to be doing an exterior renovation. In the exterior of the building will be painted to drive it, which is the siding on the building. Will be uh, repairs so on the exterior of the building will look good. Bike racks are going to be added. We'll be looking at the portals and then uh, painting each room and getting furniture in each room uh, as we need it. The big one that we'll focus on, and we have an architect, we brought an architect to help us with design concepts, are the townhouses. That will be a project that will be a multi-year project. Uh, we're working with the design concepts. We'll kind of choose uh, what it is we're going to do, get a schedule and a budget together, and get that approved by the president, uh, depending on schedule and timing. We are taking down Liberty Republic. I think most of the students are aware of that. And originally it was designed or brought on board for uh, office space. And over the years, as uh, the need for residential housing took place, they converted them to a residence hall. They were temporary when they got here in the early 70s, and we started looking at the upgrades. And it just wasn't worth the money to put into that building you're not going to get, it's like a car, you're not going to get your money back for a 20 or 30 year old car. And uh, we made a decision to um, not invest in Liberty Republic, take it down and use that money to formulate a plan for the townhouses. Um, you're the user, we're here for our students. Um, you live in, a, in the residence halls, you go to class in our buildings. So when we look at it, we tend to look at it from a perspective of infrastructure, look but in terms of how you use it and, and the amenities that we provide your feedback is critical for us to to be successful in our project so uh, if there's a way that we could improve that if there's a way that you can initiate even more input uh, we would love to hear it well now that we've seen what residential programs is up to let's take a closer look at what our students and RAs are doing here's some pieces that shed a little light on our Hofstra dorms and the RAs that keep them running Day. Move in day is definitely the one day of the year that I least look forward to. If I were to rank bad days in history, I would put move in day like right under D Day. That's where it belongs. It's not even a move in day, it's a move in week. And you prepare mentally for a week before that and then you recover for a week after that. It is it is not fun at all because any and every situation that you were ever dealt to deal with when it comes to parents, when it comes to roommates, when it comes to residents, when it comes to room situations and furniture, it all happens on that one day. And for some reason, every single parent who's moving their child into the building thinks that you're the one that's gonna solve the problem. 
and you're just not. You're just there to move people in and eat your free turkey sandwich and Oreos. All the parents are either so emotionally distraught because now they're like alone with their husband that they didn't really like in the first place and they had kids to get away from and they're like, oh no, now we have no kid as a buffer between us. But at the same time, like they have to move in like a futon. You know, it's like, it's just not, it's a bad combination of things. And when the day ends, we all cry quietly. And by then, one of the elevators is broken. Hey HTV, my name is Dylan Ander, come check out my dorm. So my fellow musicians also in college, I don't know any musicians that don't have some sweet posters up in their dorm. Got some of my legends like Bob Marley, John Mayer, and even got my first poster from uh, my first concert ever signed by all five members of Silverstein. So, next part of the room I want to show you guys the surround sound speakers. I've been jamming for too many years to have some low quality music up in here, so I took three sets of speakers and I hooked them all off Bluetooth. And honestly, when you raise this stuff, it gets pretty bumping. Like some butter old bread, you put it in the toaster and the spot you get to mend these low belly girls tossing bunches every day. Alright, enough of that. Now I'm going to show you my personal favorite part of this room. So here I got my Hagstrom Elixir series over with uh, one of my Ibanez acoustics. These are two of my nine babies. These, I love these things. Keep it real, Halstra. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing my dorm today. If you don't mind, got some music, I gotta go right. Looks like we have some pretty neat dorms here at Hofstra, but if your dorm isn't quite up to snuff, don't worry. We've brought in some must-have items that will make your room the coolest it can be. Now, I'm joined here now with our campus expert, Alexis DiGregorio, who's going to show us some of those dorm essentials. So, Alexis, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Chris. So, you are all packed for school. You think you have everything you need. Yeah. But we have collected some essentials here that could be really useful to have in your dorm room at school. Excellent. Well, I'm excited. Let's get started. What's the first thing that we have here today? Uh, the first thing we have today is a map mattress pad. Uh, what's really great about these is it provides a level of comfort between you and your bed while you're trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, they usually run one to three inches and you can find them at Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, any local dorm store. Excellent. I know the first two years I was here at Hofstra I didn't have a mattress pad and after getting one two years later I can really really feel the difference so that's a great tip that you oh, have. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what's the next thing we have here? The next thing we have is the husband pillow. Okay which, the husband pillow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but what's really great about it is that it converts your bed. Um, a lot of times when you're in your bed, you do your homework, you're eating, you're watching TV, and uh, you even have friends over. So it's really good to have an extra space to sit up. Um, you do use your room for a lot of things, so I think that's really important. That was something that really surprised me when I came here to Hofstra, is just how many things you do on your bed, whether it's, like you said, meeting with friends, doing homework, maybe getting a quick snack, watching yeah. TV, a lot of different things that, that you can do there. So it's very important to stay comfortable. Yeah, and I actually have one in my room, and I think it's fantastic. So. Excellent. Okay, so all these tips are great. Keep them coming. Uh, what's the next thing that we have here? Uh, the next thing I have is these lovely cork boards. Excellent. Uh, they're great for organization. Some people need planners, some people need whiteboards. Mm -hmm. I like having cork boards. And what's really great about these is that they provide a little zest. They're a little different from their regular quirky, little square. Fun. I like yeah. That. <laughs> I really like it. It's a good place to put your to do lists and your receipts. So. Okay, excellent. Now, where can you get something like this? Because they are a little quirky. You have to get online or are there stores for uh, it? Well, or? you can get them at Target, uh, Staples, Bed Bath & Beyond. And there's also this really cool website called Dormco, which provides a lot of essentials that you need for your dorm room. Um, okay. And I found a lot of luck there. Great. So. So let's do a quick recap. We have the cork board, the husband pillow, right? Husband yep. pillow, <laughs> and then the uh, mattress for the bed. So, uh, okay, excellent. So let's move on. Do you have something else to show? Yeah, us over here in the wardrobe, we have a couple of things for both the boys and the girls to keep them okay, organized. Great. The first being this lovely Ooh, organizer. Nice. It's a lot of pockets on there. Too. Yes, it has 39 pockets in the front great. and 29 pockets in the back. And what's really great about this for girls is a great accessory storage holder. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people put belts, 
necklaces, bracelets, clutch bags. Um, I personally have one in my room and they're just fantastic. It's really important Great. as a girl to know that you're coming into school with a lot of stuff and you don't have a lot of space. So right. consolidating is key. So it all just goes back to staying organized. That's very, very good. So you yeah. have that for the girls. Anything for, for the guys too? So or? for the guys, we have this shoe organizer. Okay. Um, a lot of girls have them, but I think guys need to know that they can organize their shoes right. as well. Yeah. <laughs> and what's really cool about this is that we also have a hat and food stored in here. Um, and it's important to know that when you're going to school, a lot of the things that you have need to be adaptable. So being able to have something like this, but being able to use it for other things is crucial. So even though it's labeled as the uh, something for shoes, you really want to just tailor it to something that works for you as an individual. Yeah, exactly. And there are a lot of really great websites now where you can go and look up um, mm -hmm. how to convert different things that you have and make old things into new things. Excellent. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, we have one more item. Is that correct? We do. All and right. I think it is the most important item. It is the, the toolkit. Tool very, yeah. very important. And what's really great about this is that you can become the best friend for everybody on your floor. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> it's yeah. a really great way to make friends. Right. Um, and it's really important to have when you're setting up furniture, um, when you need to adjust your bed for any reason. Mm. And you can get them for $15 at any local hardware store. That's not bad at all. No. Okay, great. So well, for only $15, it uh, seems like, it's like a, a, a great investment that you'll be using a lot. Yeah. Well, thanks, Alexis, for coming on. Really appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you. Thank you. So this all sounds great. I'm sure that any of these would be a wonderful addition to a dorm room. Now we're going to take a short commercial break, but when we come back, we'll talk with Hofstra students about their on-campus experience and learn what exciting new options Lackman has planned for our dining halls. Stay tuned for more Dorm Life 101. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent? One, in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. But every driver seeks the pinnacle of their achievements. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 110. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. I encourage you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to Dorm Life 101, a show about all things campus life. We just heard from Alexis DiGregorio about some simple furnishings that could make a huge difference in your dorm. We're going to now send it out to our field reporter, Julie Scroback, who's going to give us a candid look at what it's like to be a Hofstra student. I'm here at the Mac Student Center to talk with students about their thoughts, stories, and experiences of living on campus. Let's hear what they have to say. So what has been your favorite part about living on campus? Um, I would say I really like my roommates. I really like um, the bond and the community. I've developed so many friends that I'm still friends with to this day. Being close to everything on campus is super awesome, you know, versus living off campus. I know if you live off campus, it's just sort of a bummer and, you know, you don't really want to go to class because you're like, I don't know, 15 minutes away. I'm always up for like going to like residential hall events or going to Hub USA to eat with my friends late at night. My favorite thing about living on campus is how close I am to the city. Like even this week, I went to the city like twice already. How would you say that your experience as a Hofstra student differs from your friends' experiences at other schools? Well, I think Hofstra is a really great size school. There's enough students that you get a lot of diversity. You meet new people all the time, but you don't get lost. Here at Hofstra, we um, try to focus on the students more. I feel like it's definitely more personalized with the teachers and the advisors at Hofstra and that's made a big difference for me. So one of the residence halls, Liberty Republic, is going to be torn down next year. What do you want to be built in its place? Um, apartment style would be sweet, maybe for like upperclassmen. New resident complex would be nice. Uh, maybe another place that offers more sweet style. Maybe have like a kitchen and like kind of like a lounge area, like a living room style. I'm working uh, with somebody, uh, other people about making an organic garden. I want to see a bar. Like we don't have a bar on campus. So if we had like a bar that Hofstra could control, it would be much safer and be like a better experience than just like going off site. 
Today we've caught a small glimpse of what it's like to be a Hofstra student. You've heard their thoughts, ideas, and opinions. We've got a bunch more coming up for you, but first let's take a look at another one of Hofstra's neatest storms. What up HTV, I'm Courtney McCain and this is my dorm. So I love taking photos and I try and capture all of the memories that I've had in my four years at Hofstra. And the ones that I did capture, I've put up on the wall and I made this huge photo collage. It has pictures of my friends and pictures from my family and from everything from freshman year until just last semester. So as a TV major, I do a ton of editing. So I have my very own computer here that I can edit whenever I want. And then over in this corner is my bow holder. And all my bows are in arm's reach and I can finish the outfit. On this wall over here, I have a ton of different stuff that all represents who I am. I'm a member of Phi Sigma Sigma here at Hofstra. I have my paddle from my little, my name sign from my big, also on this wall is my ticket to the debate. It was really a once in a lifetime experience, so I framed my ticket and I hang it on my wall as a memory. Well, it's been fun guys, but I have some editing to do, so I'm gonna have to kick you out now. See ya! Our next segment focuses on dining here on Hofstra's campus. Recently we sat down with Lackman Food Services to talk about the new and exciting dining options they're bringing to our campus. Let's take a look. So Lackman's main goal is to constantly have um, variety available for our students and to constantly be introducing different concepts and menu items that we think our students would like. April is Grilled Cheese Month, so um, every week at the Student Center we're going to have different grilled cheese specials, so that's going to be fun and kind of a back to childhood a little bit. Students of this generation have a lot to say about their food and are very well versed in exactly where their food comes from, what's in their food. All the food that we are buying, we try to make sure that it's as local as possible, so we use local vendors as much as possible. We also try to buy um, local produce um, and things like that, so that all of the items that you're eating on the salad bar are really fresh. So one of the um, programs that we actually implemented last semester was Nyman Ranch. The whole point of Nyman Ranch is that um, they have sustainable practices, so all the meat that you're eating is all natural, not hormone fed. So in those kinds of ways, we have a few practices to make sure that we're providing the best food and dining experience for you guys. We also want to make sure that we are improving our guest service more and more every day. Thank you. There's a lot of emphasis being placed on making sure that our customers are satisfied and feel like, you know, feel it feels like home to them. We feel like family. The small campaign um, is basically to engage our associates more and to really remind them, you know, why they're here, why they love their job, um, the, their reasons to smile every single day. We also have some new platforms in order to open up communication this past semester. We started Chatback. Students, when they're at the dining facility, they can text um, a number and that um, text will go straight to the unit manager of that unit. So we're hoping that students really catch on to that. At the end of the day, the university is their home away from home. I mean, they're here and they're here for most parts of their day. And so we want to make sure that they can walk into our dining hall and feel like, you know, feel welcome and feel good about coming into our dining units. Well, it seems like students will have a lot to look forward to dining-wise in the upcoming months. We're going to take a short commercial break, but stick around. We'll have more on Hofstra dorms and RA code. And later on in the show, we'll sit down with Hofstra students to talk about their real dorm experiences. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. 
Welcome back to Dorm Life 101. I'm your host, Chris Langlois. From the coolest dorms to the greatest ways you can deck them out, we're giving you the inside scoop on how to make your on-campus experience the best it can be. Let's go back now and check out two pieces that show off some of our best dorms and the RAs that keep them going. Here's another installment of Dorms and RA Code. What's up, HTV? I'm Haley Storbeck, and welcome to my dorm. Now, this is the most used part of the dorm room. It's our futon, but we like to call it the blueton because it's blue. And we like to come here to watch TV, hang out, do our homework, and after a long day, just relax. And here is our snack corner, which is stacked with every snack imaginable. Massive bags of chips, popcorn, because we always have our movie nights, so definitely have to make sure we have a lot of popcorn here. And it's basically a free-for-all here, so if there's any food you want just for yourself, you better keep it in the room. And now, let's check out the bedroom. This is my side of the room, and as you can tell, I kind of have a safari theme going on. Um, it started out when I got this bedspread, zebra print, and then it just kind of spiraled out of control from there. I love zebras, but I also love giraffes, so then I had to add giraffes, but I like it. It's fun. It's like walking into Africa every time I go into my room. Thanks, HTV. Hope you enjoyed seeing my room. Now get out. Okay, so the most common phrases in Res Prague vocabulary are living in a fishbowl, uh, get on board. They're first years, not freshmen. I'll be there once I'm done writing this IR. I forgot to turn in my weekly. We live in residential buildings, not dorms. Don't drop the D word, dorms. Um, people like hate on you. My residents hate me. Why is no one coming to my program? Free food, free food, free food. Like literally that's all you have to say and hopefully like five people will come to your program. Okay, programs. I love programs so much because it's such a great opportunity for people to get to know each other in the building, for RAs to get to know each other in the building, and it would be a great opportunity if people showed up. You'll have your token residents who are amazing and come to all your programs and you'll knock on people's doors and like, I can't because I don't want to. I'm like, you can't even think of an excuse to tell me. Um, like I have homework. Like, it's so hard because as RAs, it's part of our job, and we really do work very hard, and God, it's great if two people show up. It's successful, but I really wish that like, when I had a program for 20 people, that the 20 people I asked to come showed up. It would be great. Um, do we have any more questions? Because I'm on duty, so I kind of have to go. I'm joined right now by students from Hofstra University who are here to talk about their experiences of living and eating here on campus. So welcome guys, thanks for coming down to the show, I appreciate it. Uh, we'll do some quick introductions, we can start at the end and, and make our way forward here. I'm Lorenzo, I'm a junior and I'm an RA in Alliance. I'm Jess, I'm a senior and I live in Estabrook. I'm Mark, I'm a sophomore and I live in NASA. Great. Well, again, thanks everyone for coming on. Uh, so I guess we'll start with our first question about eating here on campus. So there's a lot of options, a lot of places you can go to grab a meal. What's your favorite place uh, to go to to eat here at Hofstra, and why is that your favorite? Yeah, by far my favorite place would be the Student Center. Uh, definitely the sushi bar, getting the firehouse roll with the shrimp tempura, the banana in it. It's a great choice to eat. Uh, also the fact that there's so many different choices. And there always seems to be someone that I know to have a nice meal and sit down relax there, so it's okay. always nice. Great. Yeah. Uh, Jess, how about you? Uh, I love the Student Center as well. I like organic with uh, the pasta and all the veggies and the cheese. It's a really good, good meal and it's filling. <laughs> Great, so a lot of options. There were two for two with the Student Center. Lorenzo, you got something different? or I like Hofstra USA because of the sampler. Give me fries, chicken wings, chicken fingers, and mozzarella sticks. I'm pretty happy. Sounds healthy too. So healthy. Oh yeah, great. Okay. All right, so we'll go on um, to Jess uh, with this question. So what's your favorite part about living here on campus? Uh, my favorite part is living in the halls. All my friends are right around me. My best friend live right around the hall for me, so I can just walk out and everyone's there. I don't have to get in my car and drive somewhere else to see them. So everyone's all in one Every place. Everyone's together. That's good, Lorenzo, how about you? You're the RA here, right? 
I like that I can like live next to people who typically wouldn't be my friends and those neighbors, you make those connections and you become friends with completely different people. For sure, and Mark, how about you? Yeah, I like how everything's in walking distance, easy to get to if it's to classes, uh, getting food or meeting up with friends, everything's right there, so. So you guys have lived on campus for a few years now. I'm sure you have some crazy stories about some things uh, that have happened. Lorenzo, we said, you know, as we said, you are an RA. So do you have any crazy stories, anything that you've seen in the dorms as an RA or as a resident? Well, just last week, um, I heard an alarm go off um, through an emergency door. So I went to check it out. I saw three students like walk out the door. So I like, chased them down. I asked them what's going on. And the one just screams, RA! And then they all started running in opposite directions. So I just went back to my room. <laughs> That's good. How about you, Mark? Uh, yeah, it was actually the first day coming my freshman year, and it was moving day. My parents left, and someone left an Easy Mac in the oven. Uh, it bursted in flames. The fire department, the police came, evacuated us out of the building because of the smoke, and we were out there for like two hours. So it was pretty crazy. On the very first day, On the very of first you day. being here at Hofstra. Being at Hofstra. Well, I'm sure that person felt great that left that in the uh, oven. Yes. That's too funny. <laughs> and Jess, how about you? Any crazy uh, stories? Sophomore year, I was at Nassau, Suffolk, and outside there was a huge commotion, people yelling and running around, and I went to go see what it was, and turns out someone had caught one of the cats that roam around campus. And one of the Hofstra cats? One of the, and put yeah. it in his coat and brought it into the building and had it living in his room for like a week. For a whole way, oh my God. That, <laughs> all right, so apparently a lot of wild stuff going on here. Now, we, we've talked about the, the different uh, dorms that Hofstra offers. There's freshman housing, there's upperclassmen housing. What have you guys seen are some of the, the differences in those, scenar in those scenarios and those situations? Mark, have you seen any differences? Uh, yeah, that? there's definitely a big difference. My freshman year, everyone wanted to meet each other, so everyone was kind of hanging out with mm -hmm. their neighbors and you know going doing events in the dorm. And now that I'm an upperclassman, being in the dorm, there's less communication through neighbors, maybe because everyone's kind of found their niche. Right. Everyone people, has their so, friend groups yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, so, um, that's pretty much it. Jess, have you seen something similar? Or? Yeah, I would definitely agree. Um, I lived in Hague House in the Netherlands freshman year, and everyone kept their door open, was in each other's at everyone's rooms, and now I live in a tower, and kind of everyone's doors are closed, more kept to themselves, because people are older and busier, I guess. Mm -hmm. How about you, Lorenzo? I feel like in freshman housing, all the rooms, everyone's loud, and there's always the one or two rooms that are kind of quiet, and then upperclassmen, all the like, rooms are quiet, and there's the one or two rooms that are loud. Okay, great. So we have people from different years here. We have a sophomore, a senior, and a junior. What are some things that you you still want to do here at Hofstra, or what are some things maybe you wish you had done in the past that you didn't really get the time to do? We can start with uh, Jess on this one. Um, I would say I definitely wish I had studied abroad. I had a lot of friends at other colleges who went to different places like Italy and Spain. And I didn't get to do that. I didn't choose to, so I wish I had taken that chance. Okay, how about you, Lorenzo? I didn't start interning until this semester, second semester, junior year. and. There's just so much I want to do, so I kind of wish I started interning earlier. Okay, and how about you, Mark? Yeah, I would definitely like to study abroad, maybe go to Spain, Italy, uh, get some education out of the country, be a great opportunity. Well, that's been some amazing stuff, guys. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have, but I'd like to thank everyone again for coming down and, and joining us today. So on this show, we've gotten a small slice of what it's like to be a part of campus life here at Hofstra University. We've brought you inside the life of an RA, showed off some dorm essentials, and we've shared the real life experiences of Hofstra students. But we'd like to hear more from you, the viewer, so tweet at at Dorm Life 101 with your dorm stories and keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.